Hey, Better Sax players, Jay Metcalf here from bettersax.com. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through some of the things I work on in my daily practice sessions to improve my own playing. I hope that this video will give you some new ideas for things to work on, or maybe just some better ways to work on the things you're already doing. So let's begin with the three most important things you wanna be thinking about actively as well as subconsciously while you're practicing. Those are your sound, your time or rhythm, and wait, what was the other one? Just kidding, but not really. The third thing is your physical and mental state of being. Without getting too deep on you, the big picture is whenever we're practicing, we want to be physically relaxed and mentally engaged. In order to play with a beautiful sound, you need to be doing both of those things. In order to play with a solid time and rhythmic feel, you need to be doing both of those things. So in a perfect practice session, we wanna focus on our sound and time feel for every single note that we play while remaining physically relaxed and mentally engaged. If we make a habit of practicing this way, eventually it becomes second nature and part of our subconscious, and that's when you'll start to notice the effects in your performances, which is where the real payoff is, right? So let me take you through a few of the things I practice on a daily basis. Now, I recently got introduced to this new app, which I've been using every single day for the past few months while I practice. And it is such an amazing tool, and I'm just enjoying it so much that I'm going to show you everything I do today along with this app. It's called iPractice. It was developed by a fellow saxophone player named Stefan Weber from Germany. And if you play the saxophone, do yourself a favor, get this app, you'll thank me later. And since I have to mention it, this video is in no way, shape or form sponsored at all. I just love the app. Unfortunately, it's only available for iOS at the moment. So if you're on Android and you know of some apps that do similar things, please let everyone know in the comments the names of those apps. Now, I like to begin my practice sessions focusing on sound. So naturally, I play some long tones. And what I'll do is I'll take the app and I'll set it up to play drones. And I will start on C. I like to use the clarinet sound because I find it's good to match with the saxophone. And I match the pitch, my pitch of the saxophone with the drone that I'm hearing in my headphones. Now, I'm not using a visual reference like you would with a normal tuner. I don't wanna look and try to be adjusting based on what I see. I'm adjusting my pitch based on what I'm hearing, which is much more like a real playing situation. And it's going to help you develop your ability to play in tune, as well as you know your sound and your flexibility in your armature much, much faster. I like to start on middle C and play every note chromatically down to low B flat so I can set the app to play each drone for a certain amount of time. I've got it set to play each note for 12 seconds. Now, once I've done my long tones, I move on to some overtones. And again, I use the drone feature. I'll set the drone to play a B flat again with the clarinet. And listening in the headphones, I'm gonna match all of my overtones to the pitch of that drone. And then I'll just go through B, C, C sharp on a good day.
this sound warm-up helps me in so many ways. First of all, I'm getting physically relaxed while developing strength in my embouchure and air control. The slow pace helps me become mentally engaged and focused while I'm working on intonation, posture, and finger position. Even though my fingers aren't moving very much, I'm working on that by concentrating on developing really good habits there. And for those of you wondering, yes, I am playing on my new Better Sax Burnin' Alto mouthpiece, which I love. If you're looking for a mouthpiece that can play with power and warmth, has edginess, but also has a roundness and control at all volume levels and great intonation, there's a link in the description below if you wanna check it out. Next, I'm gonna jump into some sort of technical practice, and that can be scales or patterns or licks, what have you. Now, I used to always practice this stuff with just a metronome, which is great, but now I practice it with this app because in addition to the metronome, I can have chords playing underneath, and that, again, reinforces my ability to play in tune and also um, hear what different notes sound like against different chord qualities. Now, let me give you an example of what we could do. I'm gonna play a pattern out of my book, Pentatonic Patterns for Improvisation, along with a metronome and some chords. Now, I love the metronome in this app, and the thing I love about it most is the click probability feature. The metronome will randomly leave out clicks if you lower the click probability. I've got this set to 80%. That means 80% of the time, the metronome is gonna click, and 20% of the time, it's gonna be silent where there would have been a click. Now, you notice I set my click up to, to click on beats two and four. This is a great way to help lay back on tempos and avoid the tendency to rush. It just feels more natural. So I've got this set up. You can see it's got time signature and click four, four, and right there, the option to click on two and four. There are many, many more sophisticated options with this. I don't mess with all that. I keep my metronome pretty much on two and four, 80% click probability. That's how I play everything. The reason you wanted to do that click probability is because you don't want to be following a click. You want to develop confidence in your own ability to keep time at all different tempos. So by having the click randomly just not click for you, you're forcing yourself to rely on your own inner time feel. So if nothing else, that feature alone is worth the price of this app. Now I can also set this app to cycle through that chord quality in as many different ways as I can really think of. Um, some of the options here are random, which is challenging, chromatically up, chromatically down, fifth down, major second up, major second down, minor third up, and so on. You could take whatever you're playing through all 12 keys in lots of different ways with one tap of your screen. I could also change the quality of the chord that was being played. I started out playing that pattern over a major seven chord. I could also play the same pattern over a minor seven chord. <laughs> There's two different modes. This is the basic mode where you just got major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished, right? But if I hit, if I go here and I put this into expert mode, now it's opened up a long list of different chord qualities. Now, whenever I'm working on technique, I'm always careful to practice things at a tempo where I can stay physically relaxed, mentally engaged. In other words, not too fast. Now, when working on improvisation, I like to use this app 
uh, to play different chord progressions. You see, it's got this whole section here for chord progressions, and you could choose from a long list of them, from your basic 2-5-1 to 2 five ones with tensions on the dominant seven chord to tritone substitutions. And if you scroll down here, you got your minor two fives. If you scroll down, you'll see things like Lady Bird, Honeysuckle Rose Bridge, you know, different Coltrane changes, tons of options to keep you busy forever. <laughs> Now, up a half step. Second time. Up a half step. To work on an improvisation, I might take this and put it in a, a key that I hate to play in and just leave it on for 10 minutes and make myself play in F sharp for a while. So as you can see, that app has endless possibilities and I myself have not even scratched the surface. On a good day, I could spend an hour on that sound and technique warm up. And then I like to move into working on learning songs. And I will pick a song to work on. I will learn the melody. I will just play the melody over and over again and you know try to get it part of me so that I can't mess it up. After I've played the melody a bunch of times and feel comfortable, I will play the melody but with embellishments. Uh, which is kind of like easing into improvisation. And that's also, while I'm doing that, now I'm working on knowing the chord progression and all the different things that are happening harmonically in that song so that my embellishments will fit. Once I feel pretty good about that, I will have a backing track or something and play over the song for a while and just kind of have fun and try to incorporate everything that I had worked on in the earlier part of my practice session into what I'm doing. By the time I get to that point, I usually have to go do something else. But if I've gotten through that routine, I'll feel good and I'll feel like I've accomplished something that day. So I hope what I'm doing can somehow help you, give you a plan of attack for your practice sessions so you can feel good at the end of your hour and a half or however long you spend in the shed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next Better Sax video.